Hey, what's up, Chanel? Welcome to a new episode of Final Final Vlog. And today we're gonna be blasting Oakland, California's Vastum Hole Below, a dream of ritual abuse on 20 bucks Spin Records. Some of the heaviest, darkest, most fucking perverse death metal in the game. If you ever get a chance to see Vastum live, make sure to stash your LPs before they're set. Just trust me on that. And that's all I'm gonna say. Just go watch some live footage and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Dan is a monster, but this release, the third full length from Vastum, amazing stuff. Everything they've ever done is great, and yeah, I can't wait to hear more from Vastum in the near future. And uh, they are playing Killtown Death Fest, but I cannot talk about that yet. You guys will find out some information in the near future, because I may need some help here, but I don't know yet. In the meantime, though, I know I'm late on this, but... This next band is technically a label mate to Vastum because Sentient Ruin put out the cassette version of Vastum's Hole Below. And I'm talking about my non-metal album of the year for 2018. And I know I'm late and this isn't an, a non... This isn't an album of the year video, okay? This is just me going over Death Crux Mutant flesh on sentient rune and legion of the dead oh my god death crux mutant flesh death rock night stalkers death crux return with their long awaited debut album 40 minutes of shape shifting and deviant horror slash goth rock soaked in neon blood sex and perversion for fans of Beast Milk, Killing Joke, Bajas, Fields of Nephilim, and Sisters of Mercy. This is colored vinyl, even though you won't really be able to tell too well, I don't have a flashlight, but the concept behind this record is so fucking cool. Everything about this, if you watch this channel for over a year, then you saw that last year, my non-metal album of the year was fucking Drab Majesty and The Demonstration. I looked at that as such a breath of fresh air. And it was something, and it, I still listen to that record on not a semi-daily basis, but a couple times a month when I'm in the mood for it. And it's one of those albums that I really do need to be like, Alright, I'm kind of sick of hearing, you know, all these, like, sick fucking gu guitar riffs and gutturals. And I just need a little break from, like, you know, extreme music. But then comes something that, to me, is just as extreme as some of the other, like, just death metal records out there. It's just played in a completely different context. And, like, when you have members of one of your favorite doom metal bands ever, and that happens to be Buried at Sea, okay? This is members of Buried at Sea, along with Sanford Parker taking care of the production side of things. So, yeah, you kind of have the Buried at Sea guys making a gothic, like, you know, horror punk record, and oh my god, did they fucking nail it here with Mutant Flesh. Everything about this record is perfection. Seriously. Like, from the production to, like, the kind of story that builds in all around this total, total love letter to chaos, sex, body horror, and it all builds into this like rock and roll story about these once humans that are like transforming into these wandering like, you know, 
savages pretty much just lurking around the hellish neon landscape of Los Angeles. And it's just super, super fucking cool. Like, I love everything about this. And you also have, like, saxophones by, like, Bruce Lamont on here from, like, Yakuza. Holy fuck! This is so good. And I hope the color comes through on here. First off, the, the label stickers are absolutely gorgeous. I, I, I love it. But um, I know there was a little problem with the merge here. Like the color merge. So hopefully you could see. Alright, a little bit. If you look real close, there's like this awesome ring of like red. Kind of like right there where my band-aid is. But it's fucking sick. It looks sick. And then the back's just... I don't know if there's a merge on there or whatever. But... It looks great, it sounds great, and that's all that really matters is the fact that it fucking plays great. The production on here is so fucking good, and it just really helps you dive into the subject matter and stuff. Like, there's plenty of other bands that, you know, this takes obvious influences from. Like, for one, Christian Death. Like, big time Christian Death. If you're a fan of their material, get into it. But mostly I hear tons of Bajas, Beast Milk, etc. Like, it's so fucking good. Like, from Phantom Blood to Yellow Sky, the way this whole record flows. All killer, zero filler. It's just one of those records that really, really grabbed my attention from the first time I listened to it to where the time has come to open my heart and wallet on Bandcamp and hey I opened up both and this was a birthday present to myself that I ordered Christmas Day with um, a Visa gift card I was just like so excited about picking this up and it was like do I want the cassette or do I want the LP and I ended up just grabbing the vinyl because why the fuck not? I mean, maybe I'll get the uh, cassette one day. But this is heavy, heavy Sisters of Mercy vibes, but drenched in neon lights. And I look at life in LA through chaos and, like I was saying, like very, very sexualized body horror. It's amazing. Like, think naked lunch on a dance floor. Baked in neon lights. It's that fucking good. I, I, I stand by this record 125%. You don't even need to be a metal fan to realize that this is something special. It's something heavy in its own way. There's no blast beats. There's no like fucking sick dis dissonant riffing or... You know, fucking, like, caveman, knuckle-dragging death. Death Crux play a type of music that is heavily influenced in the 80s, but I'll be dead honest with you, I don't really know that much about death rock and, like, stuff like that, but I do know, like, Sisters of Mercy, Christian Death, Bajas, stuff like that, and I love it. And then I remember, like, when Beast of Milk came out with Climax, I loved it. And then, like, Sisters of... I mean, <laughs> In Solitude made Sister, and I was just even more blown away by their departure from that, like, Iron Maiden meets Merciful Fate sound into a more Sisters of Mercy, Bajas-type vibe, and still make it into a metal album. Even though this, I would not call this a metal record at all. But there's parts on it that definitely have some metal elements, but they're just drenched in all sorts of other instruments, otherworldly vocals. Everything about this is fucking amazing. 
it's just a total love letter to gothic metal from the 80s and gothic death rock. I know they're kind of the same thing, but I, I really don't know how else to describe this to you guys. It's something that you really need to throw on for yourself and take a look through LA through somebody else's eyes, especially in a more fictional context where the inhabitants of LA are just, you know, turning into these mindless, roaming creations of you know, neon lighting and just the whole chaos, sex, and the essence of rock and roll. And if you throw all that together into a fucking cauldron, what you get is mutant fucking flesh. Uh, from the icy synths to the very, very emotionally charged sounding vocals, it sounds like every word is, it, it just carries weight to it. It, it. It's an amazing, amazing listen. I don't really know what else to say about it, except for, you know, if you have an open mind and you're watching this channel with an open mind, but you're expecting, you know, some really filthy death metal or something, that's why I threw some Vastam on in the background because this is dirty in its own way. And it's kind of the more perverse, sexualized nature of mutant flesh. It's just an amazing, amazing slab of death rock, gothic rock, and just this past, like, time period that is kind of making its way back, but Fuck trends, fuck, you know, the whole entire resurgence of synth wave. This is something on its own. And on its own, I really like how it stands. And it's something that's not to be taken too lightly. Like, the fact that it even has, like, dance sensibility to it. There's parts where, like... You can, like, find yourself doing that, like, South Park Kids Gothic, like, you know, they're like, I don't know, the Gothic Kids on South Park. I feel like this is what they would be listening to. Like, fuck any Cure comparisons. This really, really sounds like Bajas bathing in neon lighting and just soaking it into their bloodstream and coming out with, hey... Let's make our music still as dark as possible, but let's add this, like, kind of vibe that you can dance to. And it's just an amazing, amazing feat right here. Sonically, aesthetically, fucking cosmetically, wow. Everything about Death Crux, Mutant Flesh, is a goddamn A+. Plus. From the sun-baked, filthy streets of Los Angeles comes this gothic metal masterpiece. Death Crux, Mutant Flesh on Sentient Rune and Legion of the Dead. This is just one of the best non-metal releases of 2018 and just... Something you are going to have a hard fucking time getting off of your turntable because it's that good that it stole my beard and made me have a mustache. It happens. But get into Death Crux, Mutant Flesh on Sentient Rune and Legion of the Dead and trust me, you will love this. If you're a fan of Beast Milk, Bajas, Sisters of Mercy, you have no reason not to at least check out the Bandcamp link and get into Death Crux. And we were blasting Sentient Rune and 20 Buck Spins, Vastum, Hole Below, A Dream of Ritual Abuse, Killer Death Metal from the Bay. And as always, you guys fucking rule. Thanks for watching. Hills.